สวัสดีครับ Welcome to Puka Extra brought to you by PSD Windows and Doors. It's Wednesday, January 8th, and I'm your host JP Mestanza. Let's start with our top story. Phuket City Municipality is set to ask the cabinet in Bangkok for approval to build a third incineration plant in a local mangrove forest in Sapanhin due to the increasing amount of rubbish being generated on this island. Officials say rubbish management in Phuket depends on two incineration plants in another part of Sapanhin, which have a combined a combined capacity of 950 tons a day. Currently, there are about 970 tons of rubbish to manage each day, and the surplus is being sent to 100 rai of local landfill, where about 70,000 tons of rubbish has already been buried. The new incinerator will have the capacity to handle 600 tons daily, and a feasibility study is now being conducted, which is expected to be done by mid-2020. Officials say that while the municipality will provide the land for the new incinerator, financing for it will come from the private sector at a cost of at least 1 billion baht and will take up to three years to construct. The foreign ministry is backtracking on earlier statements by the foreign minister that the United States had informed Thailand one day before its drone attack which killed Iranian forces leader Qasem Soleimani saying the report was quote misinformed. A ministry spokeswoman was commenting on remarks by Foreign Minister Don Pramud Whitney before reporters at the government house earlier last week. He suggested the U.S. had told Thailand about the attack on Thursday, a day before it happened, explaining that normally such an advisory would go through ASEAN, which Thailand chaired until recently. However, subsequent checks found this was not the case. The U.S.'s closest allies with, uh, with troops in Iraq, including Britain and Australia, say they themselves were not told in advance and nor was the U.S. Congress. Mr. Don's remarks sparked public criticism questioning why the minister disclosed such information publicly even when subsequent checks from his own ministry found them to be untrue. The plastic bags ban here in Thailand is causing some ruckus on several fronts. The first is activists accusing retailers of violating consumer rights and failing to offer alternatives. Another is the crea creativity of some shoppers who use their own alternatives. And lastly, the plastics industry is seeking state help. January 1st saw a broad plastic bags ban in retail businesses across Thailand, a move that was actually two years ahead of schedule by the government's own timeline. And now activists like Sri Suwan Janya say that retailers are placing the burden to their customers by, quote, unreasonably raising prices of alternative containers, with consumers having no choice but to buy them. The government is also being accused of failing to protect consumers' rights. Thailand's plastics industry, reprocessors, and related industries are also calling for the government to provide assistance, at least in the short term, as they say they can't afford to reinvest in new machines to produce new types of recyclable bags, especially small and medium-sized enterprises, saying the ban has severely affected the domestic industry and that they were not ready for the adjustment this year, that the plan was to have a full ban in two years' time. Meanwhile, shoppers across Thailand are dealing with the plastic bags ban in various ways as many have taken to social media to show just how creative they can get to carry all of their groceries. Some use wheelbarrows, t-shirts, others are using suitcases, bird cages, wicker baskets, while one guy even used traffic cones and he even laundry hangers. We can't stop looking at some of these, so if you find any photos on social media, post them in the comment section. Pukadex Show, we are back after this. Welcome back to Pukadex Extra. Police and soldiers were combing the border area in Songkla Sadao district in search of 18 illegal Rohingya migrants who fled from a detention camp shortly before dawn today. This morning at about 4 a.m., the iron grill of the cell windows on the third floor of the immigration center was broken through, and 19 total Rohingya climbed down knotted sheets all tied together, escaping on foot. One of the escapees broke their leg while fleeing, and he was captured while hiding out in a nearby village, but 18 of them are still on the run, 
believed to be hiding in the jungles bordering Malaysia. All of the escapees were detained last year during a clampdown on human trafficking rings smuggling Rohingya migrants from Myanmar through Thailand and into Malaysia. Police are now asking villagers in the area to keep an eye out and they're using sniffer dogs to help track those who escaped. 3.18 trillion baht, that's the amount of tourism revenue that the Tourism Authority of Thailand, the TAT, believes the kingdom will generate in all of 2020, a 4% increase year on year. Out of the 3.18 trillion baht, just over 2 trillion of that is, according to the TAT, going to come from international tourists, with 1.16 trillion baht coming from domestic tourists. Thailand welcomed over 39 million international tourist arrivals on 2019, the 39 millionth of which came on December 27th. And that's it for today's Phuket Extra, brought to you by PSD Windows and Doors. For safe, secure, and soundproof windows, visit pvcphuket.com. From all of us here at the Phuket News Center, thanks for watching, and be sure to stay up to date at thephuketnews.com. Until tomorrow, stay classy, Phuket.